Uh, hi everyone, um, so this is the third lecture in the taught part of the coursework for your studies. Um, sorry I'm not in to do it in person, but this is probably the best I can do um, that will allow you to continue with your research and your work towards your coursework. So um, we'll do this th third one on Alexander the Third. We've, remember, we've already looked at two previous czars. We've looked at Nicholas I, 1825 to 1855, and we've looked at Alexander II, 1855 to 1881. Um, and both of those two characters were fairly different in their approach to ruling Russia. If you remember, Nicholas was very repressive and looked to control Russia and certainly wanted to ensure that autocracy, that is the rule by the czars, and the all-powerful czars continued within um, Russia. And Alexander II was the same. He wanted to maintain autocracy, but he was much more liberal and open to ideas of reform, most notably his sort of flagship policy, um, the Emancipation of the Serfs Act of 1861. We learned about that last time. So he was a, he was a very different character, certainly in the early part of his reign. In the latter part of his reign, um, maybe once uh, revolutionary ideas, you might say, uh, people had started to get the idea that, that Russia could and should change, um, particularly westernizers from, we talked about those, um, they learned about what happened abroad in countries like France and with the French Revolution and how Britain's uh, political system worked. So um, they were they were they were looking for a, a different way. And a, as that sort of started to develop, Alexander II began to clamp down a little bit, and certainly was far less of a reformer, and used a bit more repression in his rule. And um, anyway, his the the end of his reign neatly ties us into the third character that we're going to look at. Uh, this chap, Alexander the Third. Um, so what we're doing here, well, same as previously, we're gaining an overview of his reign, focusing on some of the key events, some of the main people, and some of the important factors in the reign of Alexander III. And it's that idea of the factors that's kind of really important because our study, remember, tiny back to the question, is all about um, why czarism collapsed in 1917. And... Um, We've already seen kind of like the seeds of, of that collapse being sown. Um, the idea of political opposition, certainly um, cracks beginning to appear in the system of autocracy, you can say, through their actions. Um, and so that is something that's definitely going to continue with Alexander III. So let's um, sort of march on with him. So what was he like as a character? Well... Not very imaginative as a ruler, which would possibly suggest to you that uh, as an unimaginative person wasn't really going to be thinking outside of the box or looking for reform. And certainly he wasn't, uh, although he was honest and sincere and did what he said he was going to do, wasn't particularly intelligent. And if you look at his background, trained for the army rather than as a czar. We're back here with someone more like Nicholas I rather than Alexander II because he's not being trained to be the next Tsar. He's going into the army and his unimaginative um, and certainly narrow education doesn't lend itself or didn't lend itself to thinking about reforming Russia in any way. And he was particularly strong-willed as a character stern at times and yes ruthless and strong-willed in other words when he wanted to achieve something he made sure he set out to do it and no one was going to change his mind um, on that he was also a firm believer in autocracy so wanted to maintain that within within russia um, and was quite imposing as a character and i've written there he was a natural autocrat now i know it seems like a silly thing really to say that impressive in appearance but you know, he was a commanding figure. He was a sizable person. He's six foot three, but in at the time, if you think about like how heights have changed over the last hundred and fifty years or so, 
you know, adult males have probably grown in size on average to the something like, I don't know, six to seven inches or something like that. Well, if you add that sort of height onto this character, you're looking at someone who is approaching, if they were born today or were alive today, they might be somewhere approaching seven foot. Now, he may not be, but in terms of everybody else, he would look that much taller than everybody else. In that sense, he was an imposing character, naturally powerful, um, and his manner also portrayed himself as someone not to be messed with, somebody who um, knew what he wanted to do and, and was going to try to, to, to achieve that. Um, so that's kind of him as his character in a, in a nutshell, I suppose. Um, and there's a couple more things on this screen to talk about. Um, I've said there that he was healthy. Well, that his height, his size, his stature would imply that, because uh, you don't get to be that big without being very healthy and you know well nourished and so on. Um, and was vigorous as a character, someone who had lots of energy for doing things, but died, um, you know, quite suddenly. I know 49 would be relatively old for the day, but not if you were necessarily, if you, if you were an ordinary person, definitely, you know, 40 would have been old age. But as a royal, someone who had all the benefits of, you know, doctors uh, being around them all of the time, um, or, you know, could eat well, could be well looked after, uh, lived in good conditions, you know, that's that's not a particularly old age. Died relatively suddenly from this illness, nephritis affecting his kidney. So um, he lived a good life and did did uh, um, a lot with it to maintain Russia's position, but died quickly. But it's this one that's really important to me on this slide here. And notice the date here, the first of March, eighteen eighty one. That's when Alexander II was assassinated. Now, the irony of that assassination was, and this would be something definitely worth doing a little bit of research on, um, he was assassinated by this group, the People's Will, who we've seen before, or they certainly cropped up. Um, they would definitely be worth doing a little bit of research into, as would his assassination. But the irony of the assassination was that Alexander II was actually on his way um, to um, effectively sign a document which would create, for the very first time in Russia, um, a democratic assembly, like a national assembly, effectively a parliament, um, is what he was on his way to do. And on his way to do that, he was assassinated by people who wanted those things. So although they didn't know it, he was about to give them pretty much what they wanted to do. In a way, it would have been an even bigger reform than the emancipation of the serfs, granting democracy uh, to Russia, something that groups like the People's Will were striving for, um, and they killed the very man who was about to put that on a plate for them. Uh, not, of course, that, that they knew it. But the significance of that is very important for Alexander III's rule, because... Now that his father has been murdered, that's how he sees it, you know, we call it an assassination, but to him it's a murder of his father, very brutally, by a revolutionary group. Um, that's going to make him think about, well, hold on a minute, I don't want the same thing to happen to me. Um, my dad was trying to, he, you know, he was being very liberal, he was being generous, he was trying to reform Russia, but actually those reforms created his death. He brought about his own downfall. Alexander might, Alexander III might think that his father brought down his own downfall because he gave that little chink of light, the ability for some groups in Russia to see that change was possible. And, and by almost giving them a little bit, they wanted more and more and more. And ultimately, he might see that as the, one of the key reasons why his father was killed. And he certainly didn't want that to happen to him. And this, this merely really um, enhanced uh, his feeling of conservatism. So this is the important thing to take from this um, first slide, that he's, he's going to be reacting to that assassination, and the rest of his reign is really framed by the assassination uh, of his father.